How many of you want to be successful in life? Raise your hand. What we're going to do now is we're going to enter into the book of Proverbs. Everybody say Proverbs. The book of Proverbs in the Bible is one of the most practical books ever in the Bible. And we're going to unearth its success principles. Everybody say success principles. The book of Proverbs talks about how to be successful in life. It is the most practical book you could ever find in Scripture. And what we're going to do is we're going to unearth two per Sunday. So we're going to unearth and talk about two principles today, two principles next Sunday, and two principles two Sundays from now. Are you ready? Yes. We're going to talk about today, execution and endurance. Everybody say execution. execution. Everybody say endurance. Once upon a time, there were th three farmers. The first farmer, let's call him Farmer Frady. Everybody say Farmer Frady. Farmer Frady is a guy who, he's a sophisticated guy. He's someone who, very intelligent. But you see, maybe because of being too intelligent, is there ever such a thing, he did not want to plant too many seeds because he always asks the question, what if? You know what I'm talking about? What if there's going to be a storm? I mean, I'm going to plant and then there's going to be a storm. I'm going to plant and what if there's going to be a bug infestation? What if there's going to be an alien invasion? What if there's going to be a zombie attack? What if? So he's filled with what ifs. And because, you know, what if I plant and it doesn't grow? What if I plant, it grows, but it does not bear fruit? What if I plant and it grows and it bears fruit, but nobody buys my fruit? And so because of the what ifs and what ifs and what ifs, does this sound familiar to you? Do you know of any Farmer Frady's in your life. So Farmer Frady is not able to plant. The second farmer, his name is Farmer Flaky. Say Flaky. And Farmer Flaky, he plants, but he gets distracted along the way. He plants and he goofs off. He plants and, but instead of tending the farm, he plays video games for eight hours. And then he watches telenovelas of all sorts and kinds. Filipino and Korean and Taiwanese and, and Russian and Martian, etc. So, so, you know, he goes on and, and th that's what happens to Mr. Mr. Uh, I'm sorry, Father Farmer uh, uh, Flaky. And, and then there's Farmer Focused. And Farmer Focused is a simple guy. And, and Farmer, everybody say simple. simple. Touch somebody beside you and say simplify. simplify. Farmer Focused is, is, is really focused. He, he plants, takes care of the farm, and then only he has a huge harvest. How many of you want to have a huge harvest in your life? You want to have a huge harvest? Here we go. Are you ready? You want to know how to have a huge harvest? Farmer Frady and Farmer Flaky and Farmer Focus one day had a lunch. And as they were eating Farmer Frady and Farmer Flaky, they began to complain. They began to complain about all sorts of things. They, they said, we had a small harvest this season. Why? Oh, because of the weather. And... Farmer Frady said, yes, because of climate change. And Farmer Flaky said, yes, and because Brad Pitt and Angelina broke up. You know, I got depressed, and I couldn't concentrate on my work. And so on and on, they began to complain. Does this sound familiar to you? That when failure comes, instead of looking at yourself on how you contributed to the failure, what you do is you start blaming other people, yes or no? Does this sound familiar to you? Touch somebody beside you and say, stop blaming. stop blaming. Stop blaming. Stop blaming your parents. Stop blaming, you know, the government. Stop blaming the senators, the Congress. Stop blaming your neighbors. Stop blaming your mother. Stop blaming your best friend. Stop blaming. In fact, that was what Farmer 
focus decided to do. He, he was listening to all their complaints and then he said, guys, you can't control the weather. You can't control the climate change. You cannot control Brad, Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie. You can only control what you can control, focus on what you can control. And, and that was when Farmer Frady said, well, I, I, I guess I, I did not plant many seeds because I was afraid. And then he asked, Farmer Focus, how, how do you get rid of your fears? How do you get rid of your fears? And, and Farmer Focus said, uh, who said, I got rid of my fears? And, and he said, courage is not the absence of fear. It is doing it while you're afraid. And, and he said, I have a motto in life. He said, do it afraid. Hold someone's hand, please. Let some blood spurt out as you squeeze that hand. Just tell that person, do it afraid. Do it afraid. This is the book of Proverbs when it talks about execution. Everybody say execution. Proverbs chapter, let, let's read, uh, let me see. Let's read Proverbs 14. That's right, verse 23. Work brings profit, but mere talk leads to poverty. I'll give you another verse. Proverbs 10, verse 4. So for the next, for the next three Sundays, we're just going to work on the book of Proverbs. Proverbs 10, verse 4. Lazy hands make for poverty, but diligent hands bring wealth. Execution. Everybody say that word again, execution. If you're going to make a list of the most successful people that you know, both near and far, people that you know intimately, personally, and those that you know from afar, list all the successful people. I bet that if you look at that list, the common denominator that you will find among these successful people, ask me what? They love their work. They love their work and they have a bias for action. They love to pull the trigger. They execute. They're people of action. Ah, 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 ah. They, just, they don't just talk about it. Yes or no? And, and that's my experience. When, when, I, when, I, when I look at the, the people in any field, people that I know that are successful, whether it be in business, whether it be in ministry, whether it be in family and relationships, whether it be in sports or in health, physical health, whatever the field is, if they are successful, it's because they're people that execute. Everybody say that word again, execute. Because of my work, because I, I travel a lot, a, a lot of people, a lot of people come up to me at different times, M many of them young people, and, and they say, Brother Bo, I have a brilliant business idea. Can I share it with you? And then they say, please don't share it to anyone else, just the two of us, because I don't want anyone to know about my brilliant idea. And, and so they've got this, and, and sometimes there was this young fellow who told me, Brother Bo, this is going to be the next Uber. Wow. This will disrupt an industry. So some people come up to me with this brilliant business idea. Some of them are brilliant. Some of them are, are, are not too brilliant. You know, they're, it reminds me of uh, some of the business ideas and inventions that I see in the internet. I'm sure you've seen some of them, uh, like, like this one. You know, this is a cool idea. <laughs> it's cool, right? And, or, or about this, children, children, are, children are, are pretty useless in society, so might as well make them mop the floor. <laughs> or how about this, you, you, you're sleepy in the MRT or in the LRT, why don't you wear a hat, put a suction cup, and then put a sign that says, you know, wake me up in Cobal. I mean, isn't that, or how about, I will not wear this, I, I, please, I, I will not. I, you know, I don't care how, how much I sneeze or how, how much colds I have, I will not wear uh, that. It's, it's terrible. It's, it's a terrible <laughs> idea. And, and this one, this invention, will, you will not buy any more bottled water, ever. No more. Just collect the rain and... This one, I, 
do you, how many of you like videoke? How many of you like videokes? You, you like, okay, sometimes the neighbors complain, use this. It, no one will hear you sing. I, how, how about this, how about this? Um, ladies, sometimes it's so difficult to put lipstick. Why not, right? Or, or, to make it even simpler, this is my last picture. Make it a stamp pad. Now, I'm gonna tell you the truth. If you have a brilliant business idea, I'm gonna warn you now, it will not make you rich. It will not make you a multimillionaire. Here's the secret, ask me what? Success does not come from brilliant business ideas. It comes from what? The ability to? The ability to what? It's, a, it's all about execution. It's all about execution. Will you execute? Will you actually pull the trigger? Will you actually do it? I want you to elbow somebody beside you really hard until a, break, until a bone breaks. Just, just tell that person, execute. What are you waiting for? You've got this brilliant ideas and you don't do it. And, and you talk about it and you talk about it and you don't do it. Why not do it? I'm going to read that again. Successful businesses are not based on brilliant ideas, but on the ability to execute those brilliant ideas. It's all about execution. The book of Proverbs says, you've got to do it. You've got to work at it. You've got to make it happen. Success does not happen. Success, you've got to make it happen. Everybody say, everybody say that. The other thing, I think one of the reasons why Farmer Frady does not execute you know, it, it's not laziness. M many people I, I, I try to talk and mentor in their work and, and in their professional life and in their business life. Some, you know, sometimes you find lazy people, yes, but most of the time it's fear. It's the fear of rejection, the fear of loss, the fear of being ridiculed, the fear of failure, especially the fear of failure. And I, I, I love telling this to people. I've, I've developed a six-word motto for people who do not know how to execute. Are you ready? Six words. Ready? You sure? Everybody say, I'm listening. Fail tiny. Fail many. Fail quickly. Six words. Fail tiny, fail many, fail quickly. You've got to fail. So fail tiny. Don't, don't, don't start big things. Dream big, but start small. Number two, you've got to fail many. You've got to fail many times. You, don't be afraid of failure or else you will never be successful. And number three, you've got to fail quickly. You've just Go through it. Go through the failures, one after another, one after another, one after another. That's the only way that you're going to be successful in life. You know, in school, what's the passing grade? 75. Shout it out. 75. 75. Is that realistic? Is that realistic? What do you think? There's, the, there's a parable that Jesus spoke about in the Gospels. It's the parable of the sower. And in the parable of the sower, I don't know if you recall this, but Jesus said that there was this guy who was planting seeds. And he planted in a path, and then he planted in rocky soil, and then he planted in thorny bushes, and then he planted in good soil. And, and all of the three, three places where, where, where the guy planted did not work. The seeds only grew on good soil. 25% of the seeds grew. And then they grew in different degrees. Some, some bore fruit 30-fold, 60-fold, and 100-fold. Listen carefully to what I say. What's the passing grade of that farmer? I'm, I'm poor in math, so you help me. Come on. What's the passing grade of that farmer? He planted in four places and only one passed. Tell me, what's the passing grade of that farmer? Wow, you're good. That's reality. The 75 passing grade of schools, they're not reality. They won't make you successful. I'm telling you now, 25, 
if you, if you are able to succeed 25% of the time, you're going to be very successful in life. You understand what I'm saying? In school, try. Try to get a 25% grade in school. <laughs> My gosh, they're going to kick you out and then they're going to ban you from every other school. They're going to say, you're too dumb. I'm telling you now, that's not reality. I'm, a, I'm an entrepreneur and I'm telling you the passing grade of entrepreneurs is 25. Fail 75% of the time. It's okay. Fail, 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 fail. Just fail tiny. Fail many. Fail quickly. But 25% of the time, if you succeed, you're going to be very ultra successful. And then there's a second principle, aside from execution, it's called endurance. Everybody say endurance. This is when farmer Flaky makes a confession. Over lunch, he says, well, I guess it's my turn to confess. I planted, but I did not take care of what I planted. I did not take care of what I planted. And farmer focused said, you see, many farmers, they think there are only two seasons in life, the planting season and the harvest season. Actually, there are three seasons. The planting season, the harvest season, and in between, there's this long season called, the boring season called, the growing season. Success is not found in the start or at the end. It's found at the middle. Can, can, can you tell somebody beside you, that, that, that's profound, you know, that's, that's, that's from me. T tell somebody beside you, Bo said, Bo said. success is found in the middle. I'll, I'll t ask me why. Because when you start a project, tell me, be honest, it's fun, right? It's fun. It's fun to plant seeds. It's fun to start something. You know, if, if you're able to overcome your fear, pull the trigger, you know, launch a project, whoa, it's fun. During harvest time, guess what? It's exciting. It's exciting to see the results at the end of the journey, yes or no? When you see the money coming in, when you see the project being fulfilled, when you see the ministry blossoming, whatever project you're going through and you see the results, yes, it's fun at the start. It's exciting at the end, but success is found in the middle. It's, it's when you are able to do the work every day without yet seeing the results. That's when you are successful in life. And, and I'm... I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to share with you one verse from the book of Proverbs. Are you ready? It's chapter 13, verse 11. And it says, let's read, read together. Wealth from get-rich-quick schemes quickly disappears. Wealth from hard work grows over time. I, I, I want you to say that with me, over time. I believe success is like this. See this graph. It, it starts here, and you don't see any results for a long, everybody say long. No, don't, don't say, say, say this, for a long time. You don't see any results for a long time, but then somewhere here along the way, are you with me on this? You're, you're gonna see an exponential action. And, and it's going to, there's a turning point, there's a tipping point, and, and it pivots, and all of a sudden, you become very successful. But will you have the, everybody say endurance. Will you have the endurance to be patient, to be able to do something boring every day, every day, every day, every day, until this happens? Can I give you an example? Can I? Okay. Uh, Last week, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm showing this not to brag, okay? But I was awarded by the Catholic Social Mass Media Awards 2016 Best Social Media Influencer. I'm, I'm just using this as an example, okay? I'm, I'm, I'm not in any way bragging or boasting. 
If you go to my Facebook account, this is, this is what it's all about, okay? Facebook, YouTube, IG, etc. Now, some of those are foreign to, to some of you, okay? Um, in, in Facebook, I, I have a video every day. Well, Monday to Friday. It's called Full Tank. How many of you watch it? Just curious. Good. And I, I put it up, and it's, you know, seven, eight, nine minutes every day, you know, sharing on the gospel. And people come up to me, oh, you know, they say, oh, Bo, you're, you're, wow, that full tank, I, I really love it. And, and I, I can't believe it, 200,000 people watch it every day. Whoa, you know, and, 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 then, and then some of them, or at least one, one or two, asked me, Bo, but ka ganyan? Kakainis ka? You know, you're terrible. I said, why? I said, everything you do succeeds. You know, it's full tank, 200,000 people watch every day. I mean, how do you do it? And then I smile and I say this. What year is it now? He said, 2016. Yeah, 2016. I received this, 2016. Full tank, 2016. Do you know when I started putting online videos on the internet every day? 2006. 2006, I put online videos every single day. You think I had 200,000 people watching me then? I had less than 1,000 people. And, and I was thinking to myself, should I? There were days when I said, should I still do this? No one's watching. You know, I would have two comments. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, now, now I have 500 comments for per video, but in 2006, 2007, 2008, 2009, three comments. Yay! From two it became three after three years. Are you listening to what I'm saying? There's this, you know, people don't understand that. All they see is the harvest. They don't understand that there's the planting season and then there's the growing season that's so long. Here's my point and I, I want to share this to you. Do you have the execution and do you have the endurance to wait for the harvest? Am I making sense to you? I get interviewed a lot. Maybe I'd like to end here. And uh, I, I'd like to kind of like close this. I get interviewed a lot nowadays. And, you know, TV reporters, journalists, you know, and, and they love asking me this one question. Bo, what makes you successful? What makes you successful? And sometimes you, you can only, you know, I mean, sheesh, you're on TV and you, you only have, what, five minutes, you know, three minutes to answer. I mean, it's, it's really crazy. And, and so I, I, I love saying grace. <laughs> grace. It's God. I mean, <laughs> it's God's gift. But, but, you know, these people, sometimes they're, they're, they, they're, they're not content with that answer. Come on, you did something. What, what? And so my, my next favorite answer is this. It's also one word. Are you ready? Everybody say, I'm listening. I'm listening. My secret to success. Aside from grace, okay? This is serious. Can I sit down? Imagine that you and I are in the living room. Just the two of us. And you're asking me that question, Bo, why are you so successful? Family life, financial life, health, spirit. why are you so successful? So we're, we're drinking our coffee. I put it down. I inhale. And then I tell you. I'll tell you. <laughs> My secret to success is... Time. And of course you're there, huh? <laughs> Time? Time. Time. It's time. Ah, okay. When did Light of Jesus start? 1980. 37 years ago, 36 years ago. In a small garage, 20 people. How many times did I want to give up with all the problems of ministry? 
After 27 years in light of Jesus, we were only 2,000 members. After 27 years, 2,000 members. Crazy. Seven years ago, we only had one feast. Now we had 285 all over the world. But how long did it take? 36 years. Are you listening to me? Can, can you post the graph again, that long graph? Am I making sense to you? 1980. 2007. Today. You got what I'm saying? Long growth. How many years have I been writing books? When I was 20 years old, I wrote my first book. Were there times when I wanted to give up? There were times when I got criticized. I remember these very scholarly people come up to me. One of them was a priest. Brother Bo, when you write, it's like cotton candy. Parang, when will you write serious stuff, deep stuff? And, and I, I felt so small. I felt like, a, like an ant, like a mosquito in front of this scholarly guy, you know? And, and I, I was so embarrassed that I was writing simple stuff, easy to read stuff. But, but today, today I've, I'm, write, I'm busy writing my 47th book. And every book has become a bestseller. Every single book has become a bestseller. Why? Because it's so simple. And, and because I'm human, I want to go to that priest and say, how many books have you, read, have you written? <laughs> of course, that's my human part. But I wanted to, you know, I felt so small. And, but it took years. Everybody say time. How long has Anoim been in place? You know, 20 years. Crazy stuff happened. Lack of money, building it. Kerygma magazine. We started it in 1990. 26 years ago. It's time. It's all about time. Are you willing to stick to one thing? Just one thing and keep at it and keep at it and keep at it. Execution, endurance. Execution, endurance. Amen? Everybody say expecting. Can you put your hand on your stomach like this? And then look at someone beside you. Tapos yung ngiti nyo, yung sobrang parang, yung, yung ganun na. Pwede, kaya nyo yan? Gaya nyo nga ako. Yung ganun na. Iba, iba kasi yung ganun. Iba yung. Okay, can you look at someone? Pick a partner. Pick a partner. Tapos hold your stomach like this. Tapos on the count of three, yung ngiti sinasabi ko. One, two, three. Okay? Okay ba? And then, can you please tell that person, yung, yung pinaka, pinaka kilig voice ninyo, say, I'm expecting. <laughs> Paki, pakisabi, one, two, three, go. Okay. Kung may lalaking gumawa niya, to sobrang natural, medyo ingata. No, but seriously, you, you are expecting. Tell someone beside you, you're expecting. Let's read this verse on the screen from Proverbs 16. Ready, get set, go. Commit. Your work to the Lord, then it will succeed. Say that same thing to someone beside you with conviction. Commit your work to the Lord, then you will succeed. Success is about execution, endurance, but it is also about expectation. You know what? My, my wife and I, when... <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you a, a, a secret, a story. Is that Okay. So it took us around three years, or, or on our third year, we got pregnant. On our first year, we, we said we'll just relax and, you know, we won't rush it because we had a long-distance relationship. But then after the first year, on the second year, parang, tara, gusto na natin, gusto na natin magka-baby. And then it, it didn't come right away. And on the third year, this is what my wife said, ang galing ng asawa ko eh. Because her, she, she really wanted to be a mom that this is her life 
purpose. And on the third year, parang sabi niya, you know what, babe? I just believe God will give me a baby. You know, her faith was so strong. And this is how daring her faith was. Huh? She, she had this devotion to Padre Pio. You know Padre Pio? Because several people talked to her about Padre Pio, gave her the prayer to Padre Pio, told her a story about Padre Pio. So she took it as a sign or, or as a conviction in her heart that you know God was leading her to pray for the intercession of Padre Pio. And so she said, all right, Padre Pio, I'm going to you know, follow your example of faith and you're going to be my intercessor. And then came to the point when she was so bold and she said, Padre Pio, on your feast day, I want to be pregnant. Ako talaga, whoa, teka babe, hindi ganun yun. Seryoso ah. Honestly, because I, I mean, I kind of felt like, teka, parang, di ba, paano kung hindi mangyari, di ba, medyo disappointment. But I was like, I'm not sure if it works that way, babe. Honestly, I, that's how I felt. But I didn't say that. I didn't say that because that was her faith. And I just had to support her. I mean, sometimes as a preacher, you want to wife mo and you want to you know, tell her, no, this is the word of God, blah, blah, blah. But there are times, like, word of God, word of God. But sometimes when they're super faith and you want to hold them down, she's like, wag mo kong kokontrahin, wag mo kokontrahin, this is my faith. And so I'm like, okay, I, I support you. And a- ako na lang talaga, Lord, sana, please. Paano hindi tayo mapahiya? Alright? S- s- sige na. Padre Pio, game. Siya, minsan lang. And lo and behold, alright, I-, I kid you not, on the morning of Padre Pio, <laughs> the morning of Padre Pio's feast day, at 6 o'clock in the morning, I heard a Petri dish in the, in the, in the bathroom. Yung nahulog, yung, yung bilog na. Never mind. Yeah. But anyway, that, that's the thing that you, the pregnancy test. And I walk in the room, and she's holding it, but she didn't want to look at it. And she goes, "Ikaw tumingin." And ako talaga, I, I, talaga parang pikit mo na mata, parang hmm, to talaga yon, parang background music, please. And then, pagtingin ko two lines, and I'm like, "Oh my God, it worked!" Parang galeng, de ba? Parang I mean, na, hindi naman ganon. Pero I napaupu talaga ako on the floor, and I'm like, "Wow, her her faith prevailed." Her, her faith prevailed. And it was amazing. And that, that is the introduction to my message. Okay? Introduction pa lang yun. Akala nyo yun yung message. But it's, it's one part of the message. Because this is what I want to tell you. You know what? Faith, according to the Bible, is believing in the things that you cannot see. You know, I don't need faith to say, there is a speaker here. I mean, it's right there. There are 3,000 people in this room by faith. No, you're already there. I can see you. Faith is not faith if you can see it. You understand? That's why sometimes you're saying, Lord, show me naman. Or Lord, sige na, parang, you know, if you show me, I will believe. But that defeats the whole idea of being expectant. Because if it's already there, there's no need to expect. You get what I'm saying? But when you're pregnant, there are two phases. Everybody say two phases. There is conception and then there is birth. How many of you know when you were conceived? Raise your hand. Do you know? You see, it's funny. No one knows. But in reality, that is when your life began. Do you agree with me? It's just that the world celebrates the birthday because that's when people see it. The baby come out. Try to follow me with with this, all right? When the baby comes out and people see it, then they consider it as if that's when it started. I disagree. That's only when you saw the gift. But the gift was given nine months before. Am I making sense? All right. Can you, can, can you lean in a little? Tapos lagyan natin ng konting background music para medyo madrama. Can you lean in? Come on. Everybody, just lean in a little. A lot of you are waiting to see your miracle. A lot of you are waiting to see abundance happen in your life. A lot of you are waiting to see that better job 
that bigger house, that bigger bank account, that brand new car, that, that money flowing in. Yes? And a lot of us think that that's when the miracle happens. But no. This is what I'm telling you. Hold your stomach again. God has already conceived the miracle in you. It's already there. It's already there. And what do pregnant people do? As soon as they find out that they've conceived, they already start taking care of their body. They start shopping in baby stores. They start buying new furniture. They start thinking of names, going through baby books. They start dreaming. They start planning. They start acting. Even if the baby is not yet there, do you get what I'm saying? You don't need to wait for the birth of your miracle. Your miracle is already inside of you. You can expect that it's coming in God's perfect time, but you act now. You act now. You start being responsible now. You start working harder now. You start praising God for the miracle now. You start sharing your faith now. Not when it comes, but now. Because expectant people know that even before the miracle arrives, they can already celebrate what God has promised. Can I get an amen? Tell someone beside you one more time, you are expecting. Hallelujah. When God manifested His flesh and blood here on earth, we celebrate the day that Jesus was introduced into humanity in the form of what we understand. But a lot of us don't realize that several thousands of years before that, that many, 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 many years before Jesus came, God had already spoken His promise. God had already spoken His promise countless times, countless times, that He would never leave us nor forsake us, that He would be there to answer us when we call, that He would be our rock, our fortress, our high tower, our shield. He had said it so many times. And He's also planted a promise in your heart. He's told you once upon a time, you're going to be successful. He's told you once upon a time, I'm going to heal you. He's told you once upon a time, that problem is going to work out. He's told you once upon a time, I'm going to save you from that disaster. Yes? Have you, how many of you have heard a promise from God once or, once or twice in your life? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Then I want you to tell you something. Raise your hand. Don't, don't listen to me. Are you listening? Say I'm listening. Listen to me. If God has made a promise to you, I want you to know something. Ask me what? He hasn't forgotten that promise. He hasn't forgotten. But His timing is perfect. And you just have to wait and expect. But while you wait, you got to do the work. You don't wait for the promise to materialize before you do the work. You work now. You pray now. You praise now and expect just like what it says. If you commit your work to the Lord, you will succeed.
Hi, I don't want to end our feast without praying for your dreams. God has planted dreams in your heart. If you have your novena to God's love where you've written down your dreams, lift them up. We're going to pray together. If you don't have this with you, it's okay. Just lift up the dreams that's in your heart right now. And just say this after me. Father, I believe that you have given me all the resources that I need to fulfill my dreams. And in the mighty name of Jesus, my dreams will come true. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. I pray that right now you will experience the blessings of God and this whole week will be blessed. I'll see you next time.